The following is a presentation of the Fairfax Network. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos. Hello, welcome to World Tour Language Series and to program number 15 of our Spanish series, Spanish program number 15. My name is Mrs. Ada. Me llamo Doña Ada. And today I'd like to welcome to you all to our objectives of the day. We have a very exciting lesson. We are going to start with reviewing time expressions that we have already learned in uh, previous lessons. I'm going to introduce a verb estar, which is another verb that has the same meaning as the previous one we learned, to be, estar, to be. We are going to have in, uh, some instruments and music from the Caribbean, and we are going to show you and talk about it. And then we are going to talk about carnival time in Puerto Rico. And we are going to have some masks to show you some masks of the different types of carnival. We have caretas. So I hope you enjoy this um, lesson that we have for you. We're going to start with our lesson on language, and we are going to review those time expressions. We're going to start with AM. AM, and how would you say AM? Remember, we say de la mañana. De la mañana. See that ñ sound? De la mañana means AM. So, how do we say PM? And PM in Spanish uh, has two meanings. PM is de la tarde, which is really the afternoon, and then de la noche either evening or night time. Like when you enter a place, you can say good evening in English, you say buenas noches, and when you leave, it is buenas noches also. So PM is de la tarde and de la noche. And remember how to say it is noon, it is midnight? How do we say it is noon and it is midnight? Do you recall? Muy bien, mis estudiantes. Let's go and see how to say it es mediodía, es mediodía, that is, it is noon, and es medianoche. Now, that's a given, because you can see noche is evening. So, medianoche es mediodía, and is medianoche. Now, that medio and media means half, half of a day and half of a night. Mediodía, medianoche. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. Now, let's practice this. Remember that I, I showed you some uh, days ago, I showed you a clock, and I told you we were not going to use verbs or anything, just the number and the time. So let's see how to say the whole phrase if we say it is one o'clock. It is one o'clock. We say es la una. See the verb ser? The first word in Spanish is from the verb ser that we studied already, and is es la una. Una is one, and in this case, because we're talking about our, it is feminine. It's, it's the same as uno, except that we put it feminine because the, the word our is a, is a feminine word. So we say es la una. I hope it is clear, es la una. If you don't understand any of these things, please write me at the address that you saw so we can, I can explain it in a more detailed fashion. Let's go to when it's after more than one. When it's more than one, you say son las, because of course it's many, many numbers. So son las. Now remember all those numbers that we learned, one to 10 or one to 12. So Son las, and let's see how to say the whole, the whole phrase. Son las, it is blank o'clock. So you put your number or your time that you see on your clock. Son las, let's say two, how would you say son las dos? It is two o'clock. So let's practice with ten. And we say son las diez. Son las diez. And it is 10 o'clock. And remember those phrases? You can add a.m. or p.m. 
son las 10 de la tarde, p.m., evening, I'm sorry, or son las 10 de la mañana, a.m. Son las 10. Now, if you were again, let's practice. I just show you this one. How would you say it is 1 o'clock? Estupendo. It is 1 o'clock. It's es la una. And again, why do we say es instead of son? Because es is the, the singular and it's one. It's one number. So it's es la una. And again, una, when you talk about time or hour, is feminine. So it has to agree with that article la. Es la una. How would you say the next one? It is 10. Fantástico. It is 10. We say son las 10. Son las 10. And again, see here it's more than one, so that article is L-A-S. Agrees with the, um, with the plural, with the many numbers. And then son agrees with all the rest because it is plural. Son las 10. Son comes from the verb ser. Son las 10. Now, let's see what we have here. I have a word, a very important letter, rather, or it's a word by itself that we need to know, or I think we already have seen it, but this is in more detail that we, we to know when we tell time. And the word is and, and it's e. And that's a junction that joins many things, joins names, joins phrases, joins everything, and it's e. So when you, find, you hear Juan y Maria, two people together and you put the E in the center, it's AND in the middle, in between the names. So let's go to our time. If I use the word E and I want to say a time in our clock or our watch, we say son las diez y cinco. Now, see, it is 10.05. Son las diez, and because the five minutes past the 10, past 10 o'clock already, so we say E. So E is when the time, the minutes have passed, we say son las diez y cinco. Like in some places we say five past 10. Son las diez y cinco. Now let's see another example again with 10 o'clock. Let's see, son las diez y diez. It is 10, 10. You know your numbers. You know your verb ser, in this case it's a plural, son. You know your articles that we have introduced already. So it's son las diez y diez. Look at your watch, look at your time. Call me and tell me what is your time, what time is it in your place when you call me. Let's just see the next one. We have 10.30 and we say son las diez y media. Let's pause here. I want to explain very carefully this one. Son las diez, it is ten, y and thirty, media. Now you'll say, wait a minute, Doña Ada, you show me that number thirty, you can say treinta, perfectly all right. You can also say son las diez y treinta. Son las diez y treinta, or in this case here, Son las diez y media. Remember I mentioned that media means half, half past ten, really. That's what it says. Half past ten, son las diez y media. If we add an S to that word media, what, what do we have then? Do you recall the clothing items? In Puerto Rico, calcetines or socks, we say medias. There's a lot of possibilities in the Spanish language, my students, and uh, the only way to remember all this is to practice. Practice makes it perfect. Practice and practice. Now, I have a word here that I want to mention it again. I believe we have talked about it. Remember, we talk about E when the minutes have passed the time. Let's talk about when it's two, it is till, it is not yet the time, and we're using minus, okay? So let's say menos, menos, which in reality means minus. So let's try, it is 9.55. How do we say 9.55? We say son las diez menos cinco, five minutes till 10. Son las diez 
menos 5. That is 9.55. So see, we use the, the menos when it's on that side of the clock, and we use e on the other side of the clock. So that is a good way to remember. Now let's see the next one and see if we can practice with this one. Son las tres menos veinte, which is 20 minutes to 3 o'clock. It's what really me, it's saying there. So it's 2.40. Son las tres menos veinte, 20 minutes till 3, rather, 20 minutes till 3. Son las tres, that's 3, menos minus 20, 20. Son las tres menos 20. In reality, it is 2.40. Son las tres menos 20. Menos is minus in subtraction, you know that. So when you use subtraction in school, you can say, you can use the word menos in Spanish as well. Now, there is a word here that has a, quite a few mean, meanings and I want to introduce it to you. And I'm sure you, ha you have heard it many times, cuarto. And cuarto means, in reality, a quarter, quor, quor, quarter of something, cuarto. Un cuarto is a quarter in a recipe, un cuarto de sal, a quarter of salt. That seems to be a lot, but anyway, cuarto. And then it also means bedroom, cuarto, or a room in a house, like bathroom, cuarto de baño. So, and then lastly is the word that is the meaning that we're using in this, at this time in this lesson. Cuarto means 15 minutes, right? Just like in English, quarter, 15 minutes. So let's use the word cuarto with our time telling, our time expressions, and let's see. Son las diez menos cuarto. See? So what happens there? What does that mean? Son las diez Menos cuarto. Very good. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. That means 9.45. Or, in reality, 15 minutes to 10. Or 10 minus 15. You put it the way you think is best for you to remember. Son las diez menos cuarto. And in this sense, cuarto does not, does not change, even if it's, we're talking about plural, many, many numbers. Son las diez menos cuarto. And let's go uh, practicing cuarto using the word e. And we'll say son las diez y cuarto. Son las diez y cuarto. What does that really mean? It is 10.15. It's 15 minutes past 10. The e tell us that we passed. So son las diez y Cuarto. Let's practice now uh, looking at, at the time in the screen. And I chose a few of these. I chose it is 1010. Now take your time and say it out loud. It is 1010. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. You said son las diez y muy bien, diez. Son las diez y diez. Do you realize that you are making uh, whole sentences? This is a whole sentence. Let's go to the next one. It is 10.30 and it is estupendo. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. Son las diez. And what did you use? Either the ones that I have, either one of the two that I have shown you. Son las diez y media or Son las diez y treinta. Both are correct. Son las diez y media. Or son las diez y treinta. And we use the, the word y because it's past. Thirty minutes past or half past. Let's go to another one. It is 9.55. How would you say that? All right. Son las diez menos cinco. Son las diez Menos cinco. That is five minutes to ten. So we're using minus, the word menos. Son las diez menos cinco. Let's see another one. It is 9.45. Okay. Again. 
son las 10 menos cuarto. That's 15 minutes to 10. Son las 10 menos cuarto. I have given a lot of review on time expressions because it can be tricky. Let's go to the next one. And we say 10.15. So how do we say that? I'll give you a few seconds. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. 10.15, that is 10 y cuarto. 10 y cuarto. Well, now that we have practiced these things, these time telling, I hope that you will remember them and use them um, very often. Use them at home, use them at school, use them with your friends. When they ask you what time is it, just play with them and t say the time in Spanish. See what the reaction it is. I'm going to introduce you a verb because it is a very important verb that is used always in our Spanish language and it's c it can get tricky and people do have a uh, difficult time learning this verb, when to use it. The verb is called, it's, it use, it's used on these phrases. These phrases you have been introduced when you were asked, how are you? And you answer, muy bien, gracias. So this is the, these is the phrases that we have used. Como estas? Como estas? Remember, you will answer, I hope, muy bien, gracias. Very well, thank you or bien gracias. And I think we learn also no muy bien gracias. I don't like the last one. I want to say muy bien gracias. So there is one phrase, como estas? And when you're talking to someone formally, remember that we use the formal you, and we say, como esta usted? Como esta usted? And we also have another one that we use when there's many people and you are addressing as you, so you say, ¿Cómo están ustedes? There you go. ¿Cómo están ustedes? So how are you all? How are you all? Well, you notice that word están comes from the verb estar, to be, estar. And we have it here, estar, to be. There you go, estar, which means to be. Remember we learned ser, to be? Now we're going to learn another one that seems to be, mean the same, but different circumstances, different contexts, estar to be. And we have yo estoy, and this is the conjugation, I am. Tú estás, you are. Usted está, you are formally. Él, ella está, he or she is. And then nosotros estamos, we are. Ustedes están, you are, as a group, and ellos and ellas están. You will see these verbs on your, on your workbook. Please open your workbook and follow them. Here we have some rules and regulations that always happen in the language. And you use estar with adjectives that describe temporary states. Use estar with adjectives that describe temporary states, such as, I am happy. Temporary means that it changes. You can change into being happy or not being happy. So, estoy contenta, I am happy. Estás enojado, I am angry. Hopefully that second one will, not, will change quickly, right? You are angry, estás enojado. And see the next rule that we have, to tell location. This can also be a change, changing of context, changing of status. La iglesia está cerca de mi casa. The church is near my house. To use the verb estar. And then, la mesa está a la derecha de la silla. Again, to tell location. The table is to the right of the chair. So these verbs, this verb estar means to be. It's kind of tricky, really, when we study it, but follow it in your lesson, in your workbook, and you will have no, no problem when you think it's, oh, it's only something that changed. It's a temporary way or a, tempor or a location. Remember that the, ver the verb said is used when you can't change it. Like if I was, born, I, were bo I was born in the United States, you say, soy de los Estados Unidos. That's innate in you. You can't change it. Or I am your mom. Soy tu mamá. That doesn't change. So you use the other verb to be, ser.
but when it changes, you can use estar. I hope it's clear. Now, let me tell you something that since we finish uh, introducing this verb and practice, I'd like to talk to you about Caribbean music. I want to talk to, to just introduce you very briefly because we're going to see an interesting clip of a video. Music in Puerto Rico, or in, in the Caribbean rather, has been influenced by the Spaniards, the Spanish, by the Africans, and by the Indians. Now, you'll be surprised if I tell you that two-thirds of the population of the Caribbean islands come from Cuba, from Dominican Republic, which is República Dominicana, and from Puerto Rico. So the music in the Caribbean is all interlocked with each other in these, through these countries. And we are going to watch a little clip that will show you the instruments that we use. These are some of the instruments which are used to play the music of the Caribbean region. Starting here, we have the congas. The congas are from the family of the Afro-Cuban head drums. These are the largest of them. This is called a tumbadora, and this is called a quinto. The tumbadora is used to mark the basic rhythm in the music. An example of this is, let's say, a rumba. The quinto is used to accompany the tumbadora, and it answers it while the basic rhythm is being played. For example, another instrument used in the Caribbean region is the bongos. The bongos are Cuban and not African in origin. They were introduced at the beginning of the 1900s. And they were introduced to meet the needs of small ensembles. I'm going to demonstrate the way they sound. The bongos can be used to accompany the congas or used as a rhythm instrument when playing a song, for example, like this. Now, the instrument of the Caribbean region are the maracas. The maracas have an interesting story because we can trace them back to the amaraca, which was an instrument used by the Indians of the Caribbean region. They used to play only with one maraca, like this, and they used to play during religious uh, festivities or rituals. The Africans that came to the New World had a similar instrument but made out of coconut shell. And they used to play them like this. Like the modern maraca, we play with two maracas instead of one. The maracas are made out of wood or made out of gourd and they're filled with seeds or little stones to produce the sound. Another instrument in the Caribbean region is the huiro. It's also called huicharo, guayo, and it's made out of a gourd, and it has some threads engraved onto it with a knife, and it's played with this metal comb, and it goes like this. Widows are also made out of metal. In the Dominican Republic, what they call a guayo, and it's used to play the merengue, is made out of metal. These are the claves. This is a typical instrument used in Cuba. And the basic task of the claves is to maintain the rhythm of the music. They are, they are made out of wood. And they go like this.
Well, I hope you have enjoyed the presentation of the different instruments that we use in the Caribbean music. I have a surprise for you, but before we do, I want to show you the word careta. Caretas or mascaras. Can you guess what does that mean? That means masks. And we can use either the word caretas, which comes from the word cara, face, or mascaras, mask. And I have um, three different versions of masks because we're going to talk about festivals in Puerto Rico. And these masks are used during our special festivals. Actually, there are three festivals, but before I talk about it, I want to show you a mask. This is a mask that is, uh, it's from the Loiza Aldea, and we're going to talk about Loiza Aldea in a minute. And this is made of coconut. And we have another mask that is used in Ponce, and this is made of paper mache. Look how nice, how beautiful this mask is. And we have a little mask of the same paper mache. And there you have it. I want you to look at this quickly, or actually, I am going to continue in our next lesson to talk about masks very quickly. But for now, do remember we have three different um, festivals in Puerto Rico that are, are celebrated throughout the year. We have the one in Atillo Festival, which is in December 27 to 28. And this was brought by the Spaniards uh, from the Canary Islands. We have the Loisa Aldea Fiesta de Santiago, which is that mass made of coconut that you saw. And El Vejigante, and this was brought by the Spaniards. There was a war between the Moors and the Spanish. So El Vejigante me, uh, characterized the Moors, and Santiago is the Spaniard knight that overthrew the Moors. And then we have the last carnival that happens in February and is in Ponce. Ponce is the southern part of Puerto Rico. And this carnival is created, has created the Puerto Rican El Vejigante. The Puerto Rican El Vejigante, which is a be big belly ca a character that goes around the town scaring and, and doing pranks to the people. Well, at this time, I have to say goodbye. Adios. Hasta mañana. Thank you.